there also a really good story here and the profitability that analysts and investors are excited about. How did you manage to do that at a time where supply chain issues have risen? We've seen costs also rising, affecting the entire sector, I'm sure, including you. And, and how sustainable is that profitability? Well, I think what's really encouraging for us is that we see our whole transformation journey here that has been going on for over three years really starting to take hold. And what you really see in 2021, uh, if we back back, you know, go back to 2019 for this brand specifically, it's the quality of the revenue now coming through. So we're seeing higher average prices. We're seeing um, less promotions by the brand in the marketplace, less inventory. We also reported inventories down 9% in the first quarter, very strong on 35% revenue growth. So it's a combination of that, as well as what we call constrained demand. In other words, we're exiting some, uh, what we feel is undifferentiated retail, especially in the US. We're tightening up our inventory buckets. And we're delivering against our go-to-market. You know, that's become more and more uh, uh, better uh, through the last three, four quarters with better innovation, better product, better footwear, better apparel, and the consumer is responding. That's sort of what I wanted to ask, which is, which is on the brand strength. There, there were questions about Under Armour in the previous few quarters and year about, about where you fit in. Nike and Adidas were doing really well and, and both taking market share in the U.S. How have you positioned the brand? Who, who's your core customer and how's that resonating? Well, we did a lot of work uh, a few years back to understand the opportunity in athletic performance. We have always felt that we are an athletic performance brand. We wanted to double down on that and we needed to know whether there was enough opportunity in that space. We clearly saw lots of opportunity in that space, and that's why we've doubled down on what we call the focus performer mindset, which is truly an athletic performance mindset. Of course, doing that well with beautiful product, we believe is also going to translate into adjacencies down the road. But at this point in time, sticking to our strategy and then being helped, I would say, somewhat by the current trends in terms of athletic performance is certainly helping us, but it is about athletic performance and making you better. That's, that's what Under Armour is all about. Patrick, I, I wanted to ask uh, just in broad terms what, what you thought about the uh, European Super League. I, I know you don't sponsor uh, Tottenham Hotspur anymore, but, but you soon when they were one of the teams uh, involved. But, but I guess a big picture question about whether sport ultimately should always be for the fans in the first instance and, and whether we kind of moved away from that a little bit? Well, we, we were, of course, looking at that and watching it um, at a distance. And uh, our focus now, of course, has become very intense around our athletes. Uh, and that's really where we're focusing our attention. We also have some very important relationships with, with the leagues, especially here in the North, North American marketplace, as well as some of our schools that, that we, of course, are heavily involved with. But ultimately, how that plays out, I think the future will, will, will tell. But I, I, I do think that we're starting to see um, things evolve in, in the space. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where that's heading at this point in time. Under Armour is focused on supporting our athletes and, and making you better. That's why we're here. And, and um, ultimately, <laughs> at this point in time, we don't sponsor any of the leagues. So are you done to that point shedding some of your athlete sponsorships and, and some of the other team sponsorships that you did scale back on. And I also noticed you didn't re-sign Misty Copeland, which, which was huge for you. She was at the center of one of the campaigns. Yeah, I think we've, we've, in general, we feel very good about where we are right now. We have certainly been scaling back a lot of our various investments over time. And a lot of that has to do with the ability to actually invest behind uh, the investments that we're making. And we think that we're getting into a better balance as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why we're investing more into marketing in the back half of the year this year is because we feel confident about our ability to read and react now. You know, we've spent a lot of effort putting new tools in place, uh, making sure that we understand our Romi, our return on marketing investment to such a degree now that we feel it's time for us to put money back into the top of the funnel, actually driving brand uh, in, in the back half of 2021 beyond what we thought going into the year, which is one of the consequences of this this um, uh, you know, year being better than we had anticipated coming into it. You launched Steph's golf line during the, the Masters. How's it doing so far? It's doing good. You know, we're so excited about Stefan right now and his performance, of course, and, and the work that we're doing with Stefan. And we believe that going forward, 
uh, one of the great things this year is going to be the release of, of the um, of the Curry 9 in the back half of the year that we're excited about. And, and also continuing to develop some of that apparel that we're doing around both the basketball initiative as well as the golf. Have to ask you, Patrick, because the, the news came out last night about the, this SEC settlement for $9 million related to disclosure of pulling forward sales. Um, that's, the, that's the allegation, of course. You didn't confirm or deny it. But, but what can you tell us about how that happened and what's in place now to make sure that investors are not misled again? Well, first of all, we're happy to put that behind us at this point. And, and of course, you know, being a public company, we're going to adhere to regulations as it relates to any sort of accounting practice going forward. And we always have. Um, and um, uh, that, that's really all I have to say about it now. And you can imagine that it's good for us to have that behind us and really you know, being able to be focused on the business is really what we want to do and service our consumers going forward. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.